Hi, this is Inelia for Ascension101.com. I'm here at my home, the Ilaria. This is uh, my liveaboard where I live with Larry, my two cats, Theodora and Brad, and my two dogs, Missy and Romeo. <laughs> so if you hear lots of noise or you see kitty cats or dogs running around, you'll know who they are. And the past few months, the end of 2016, have been very intense for a lot of us here on the planet. When looking at it, and when looking at it with friends and co-workers, we have seen that there is a type of push-pull between the energies, the high-frequency energies and the low-frequency energies, pulling um, both towards each other and against each other, um, away from each other, both in ourselves as well as uh, out there in society, reflected by the media, the news, and things that are happening at a social level. Many individuals are having times of exhaustion and also personal crises and health crises. And these have varied between the individuals around the planet, both geographically as well as individuals with regards to time. So some individuals have felt it very, very strongly around October, and another group felt it in November, others in December, and coming into January now, some people are feeling it too. Now, it's a period of time that really requires of us to commit to how we want to live our lives. And also there have been social and group events in 2016 that will greatly affect all of our lives in 2017. But also in a way in which we want it to affect us. During the very end of December 2016 and going on to January 2017 and for the next three months until about the end of March, we're going to have a sense of relief from the energies that have been really, really coming down on us. This sense of relief will only happen or will happen mainly with those individuals who have actively decided and actively decide coming forward, going forward, that they're going to stay at a high frequency vibrational level. In other words, individuals who have said no to low frequency energies or experiences and are actively stepping onto high frequency ones. 2017 gives us an opportunity to really commit to embodying the new paradigm in this lifetime. So whatever tools you're using, whatever um, groups you're working with, the individuals that you're living with, uh, the places that you're working at, you're going to, if you actively and consciously engage in high frequency conversations, activities, and actively move away from low frequency activities or happenings like events or other things like that, you're going to find the next few months very easy. In fact, they're going to be like a breath of fresh air. It's going to be like a relief and a release of um, difficulty. Uh, but it's very important that you do the active and conscious moving into high frequency stuff. Uh, stay in integrity. Don't make excuses for yourself or others with regards to low frequency engagement. And when I say low frequency engagement, it can be something very simple. For example, you're driving down the highway, somebody crosses your path, then you get super, super angry. You may become aggressive, right? Or you may swear at them. Um, that's a low frequency engagement. It brings no benefit to you or the other person or the other drivers in the road for you to step into that anger and rage uh, while you're driving. So there's going to be a high frequency emergency kit that we're putting together 
at ascension101.com uh, and it's all free files that you can download so that you can use them during these um, emergency situations when you might be being dragged into low frequency engagements. Those, uh, that example, the one on the road, is a very small type of short duration engagement or um, uh, one could say indulgence in a low frequency vibration. However, we all have families, we all have relatives, we have friends, we have co-workers and even going to the store sometimes can mean that we are engaging with individuals who have chosen, actively chosen to stay asleep and will continuously try to um, recruit us to feed their low frequency energy vibrational reality. Okay. Now, this might be a new concept to you, so I'd like to expand on that. Um, when these individuals are pulling you into drama, for example, they're basically trying to recruit you to feed that drama that is their reality. Uh, if there's nothing wrong with it, recruiting people for feeding your reality, we all do it. So. That's why it's important to surround yourself with individuals who meet your own intention of staying at a high frequency level of um, life and also actively and actively search and join with and support those individuals who help you or who feed your high frequency reality and sometimes these individuals do not necessarily have to be people you know it could be an, a favorite artist or a favorite photographer it could be a musician it could be um, somebody who makes really tasty apple pies and you know you can go and buy one from them uh, it could be individuals basically who bring beauty, joy and support to your life. So I took a little pause there and uh, you can see behind me how it's getting darker now. <laughs> the day gets on. It's only um, something like, I don't know, five or six, five in the afternoon today. Um, but it gets dark really quickly uh, where I live. Anyways, um, the next section I want to talk to you about um, uh, the energies that we can bring forth that we were able to manifest as a collective consciousness in 2016. Um, there are three energies that can become extremely powerful if we choose to step into those, if you choose to map to these energies in 2017. They're very transformational and can really have a massive effect in your life as well as the lives of those around you. I already talked a little bit about the creation of reality and how we can um, recruit individuals to support our reality I talked about how other individuals will recruit you or will try to recruit you to uh, feed and support their reality. Uh, this is most obvious when those realities are low frequency, you know, we can uh, feel the dissonance there. Now, I want to talk about those individuals who are recruiting us to create a really high frequency reality and also how our cells can go out and recruit individuals for our own high frequency reality. And the words that I'm using, you know, like recruiting and things might sound a little bit strange, but it's not really that difficult. Uh, how do you recruit somebody to support your high frequency uh, vibrational reality? Well, you basically engage with other people around you, even people who you might think would never be smiley at you, um, like a friend or even one of your parents or anything, and everything you do, every interaction that you have with them is going to be positive. So even if they um, start talking about negative things, you're not going to even respond to those negative comments or stories you're going to respond in a very positive manner 
And if you find yourself that you're feeling vulnerable or that you're feeling yourself getting recruited into their reality of low frequency stuff, you can step away. You can hang up the phone or step away and a little excuse, um, a little explanation goes a long way. Um, I'm not feeling well right now, I'll call you back tomorrow. Um, I'm not really, I'm not really in the space to discuss this type of topics right now. Um, I rather, and I really need you to support me in really cheering, cheerful or high, um, happy thoughts and situations. When um, people call you to dump their problems on you, um, there's a situation here that I say to people, well, if that individual, if you're always receiving those type of calls or emails where individuals are asking you for advice and help and it's all really sad stuff or it's sicknesses and illnesses, I said, why don't you set up a consultation where you can uh, charge these individuals for spending that time and energy helping them? And individuals will say, well, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a counselor. I'm not qualified to do that. My response to that is, well, if you're not qualified, don't do it. Don't do it with your family, don't do it with your friends, and don't do it with uh, other people. Now, that's a very clear distinction because if you are a counsellor, then that's your job and there's a very, very clear energy exchange and also you have the tools, capacities and skills to deal with those energies. But if this, this is happening to you because you've always been the go-to person when somebody has a problem in your family, it's time to start changing that. Unless you're going to make um, go to school and qualify yourself or take a course, qualify yourself to be a counsellor or a healer, if you don't want to do that or you don't feel that that's your calling in life, then you can take measures right now, this year, 2017, to start, uh, to start the um, change of how you have relationships with other people. So one of the things that, um, that we can map to coming up um, this year and one of the realities that we can feed and engage with and also be recruited to is the one about um, be unifying, becoming one as a species, becoming one in aim and action with regards to things that we really, really want to see on the planet. So have a look and see what kind of groups or individuals are following a path that really resonates with you and join them. Beware, however, of individuals and groups who have an energy of righteousness or anger. So there's, for example, um, it could be that there is a neighborhood garden that's being set up for food uh, or a food forest being set up in your neighborhood. And um, you go there and you can partake in the planting of, of the uh, plants and trees and produce and then the harvesting of them, it's a great project. But if the same group next door that does exactly the same but they're very angry and they want to um, save the planet and destroy X, Y and Z that's happening, that's a different energy. One of them is constructive, wanting to make the place better and improving your life and the life of those around you. And the other one is more to do with righteousness and save your energy. Often martyr energy is there too and victim too. So be careful when you join uh, these individuals and groups that you're going to be recruited into to look for some that um, have processed their stuff or that are clean and clear and wholly resonant. Don't make excuses. We make excuses a lot about people and individuals or why they would do something that is dissonant or hurtful. Uh, it's time to stop that. We're not going to allow people to make excuses or have stories that they can play uh, to uh, validate negative effects on us or other people around them. So 
One of the things that uh, we can map to and also feed on a planetary scale is the healing of the hurt. There was, and still is, a movement at Standing Rock that happened to unify um, many hundreds of Native American people, hundreds of Native American nations and also other peoples from around the world to protect and to stand for clean water in one particular reservation at Standing Rock. There are many messages that we were able to learn from that situation, but the main two that I would like to talk about that is huge and available for us, all of us around the planet, com coming into 2017. One is to heal the hurt. Then the elders at the reservation, at the camps, were very clear to... Um, when people were coming in, especially the Native American young people were coming in and they wanted to take action, to go and do, um, they were very clear, they would tell them that until they um, healed the hurt inside of them, that they were not allowed to take action. Uh, I thought that was extremely compassionate and amazing and the forms of healing that these tribes do, they, they involve ceremony and other things, but not all of us have access to that type of healing, but we do have access to healers and other modalities of healing. These hurts that individuals were arriving with were cultural, they were personal, they were social, they were family hurts and injuries from generations back sometimes. And um, they, were, they were conscious and aware that through active healing of the hurt, once they were healed, then the action they took was thousands of times more effective and based on integrity, love and uh, joy and light. <laughs> so the healing of the hurt, if you take anything forward in 2017, I would say do that one. Um, it's amazing and it is time, this year is the time to drop our stories. Most of us, if not all of us on the planet, the major, great majority of the individuals on the planet have had really, really tough, hurtful lives. And some individuals use that to say, that made me a better person. And the other individuals say, um, use that to say, I can be a horrible person because of what happened to me. So two stories, two opposite stories for the same story you know, of two excuses for the use of the same story. Now, those are just stories. The way that you are, this is the way you came in, and the way and the things that you do have to do with your choices and your decisions and has nothing to do with your story. So let's release those hurts, let's release that pain and those injuries. Move forward, this is the year that you can do this. Move forward into wholeness, into healing, and, um, and from that place of being complete and whole, then take action, do, <laughs> do stuff, you know, uh, join groups, um, have projects, uh, get out there and create and co-create beautiful things and beautiful relationships. Another thing that we can map to from that event or the individuals who are still at Standing Rock is unification. This is the first time in our recorded history where hundreds of tribes around the world have united and have stood together with one intent, to protect the waters of Gaia. Now, the intent is beautiful and it is amazing but what is most amazing and what brought tears to me was the fact that through 
everything that's happened on the planet, these individuals have finally come together and have united. And it wasn't just tribes, but again, people from all many nations around the planet came to be and be united in that energy. We can map to that. Even if you never went there and you never will go there, we can map to that sense of being one, being united with individuals around the planet who have an intent and a respect for human life and an intent to make this a beautiful, supportive, nurturing life experience for all of us. So those would be then the things that we can map to for 2017. Personally speaking, I talked about um, quitting my job as a public speaker and that is happening energetically. I have already released the waking up of the masses uh, messenger of empowerment. Now, moving forward, I'm dedicating my time for those individuals who are actually committed to being empowered and ascending or expanding their awareness, becoming um, active creators of the new paradigm, becoming the embodiment of the new paradigm. Um, for me, what does it mean, a new paradigm? A new paradigm means people who are happy, healthy, abundant, who live in a planet that has no fear, in a collective which is caring and supportive of all of us, no matter what our age or um, physical status or capacities or abilities, where we feel we belong and where we feel that we're supported and loved. Where we actively create our environment, our physical environment to be a Gaia that supports us and is filled with amazing abundance for our well-being. So those are our choices. No matter what we do to the planet, the planet will continue on in different shapes or forms and maybe supporting other types of life. But it is up to us to create a and continue and maybe um, return the planet to a state where that supports us fully. And um, I'm going to be spending a lot of time at our my personal platform, which is the walkwithmenow.com platform. If you're committed and you're actively working on yourself and want some feedback, some troubleshooting, some really interesting topics to explore uh, and the healing and the empowerment tools to go with that, then come and join me there. I'm also going to be spending a lot of time writing my books. You may or may not know, but Interview with an Angel has been published both in ebook format at ascension101.com and also in paperback format at lulu.com. It's a beautiful book, I love it. <laughs> uh, I am already writing uh, another novel and this is uh, going to be very educational with regards to E.T. Presence and the Anunnaki and the human nature, really. It is based on real people and events and um, some of the characters are um, uh, fictional, uh, but a lot of the characters are real. It is such a fun project and I hope to have that finished this year in 2017. So moving forward, we also are setting up a location, um, the Shaman Shack. This location is going to be not just for health and lovely food, but also training these individuals from everything that I've learned while being a public speaker myself. There is a lot of stuff that we have to learn, both from how do we support ourselves to dealing with uh, energies that come into our lives. There is also going to be courses and classes that I'm going to be giving there, as well as other hosts are going to be giving there 
for those individuals who are very dedicated and are actively working on embodying the new paradigm. So there's going to be a lot of happening there. There's going to be a library, a gallery, and um, we're still building it. Larry and myself are basically putting most of the funds there um, to do it. But if you want to send a donation, you are very welcome to do so to support us on this project. We have some amazing physical support from Hopi. We've had Tor over as well, and a couple of other people who've come and helped out to do the physical work, the actual building and cleaning and uh, uh, resorting the, the, the physical house that needed electrical systems changed and walls changed and the water system and the filters and everything else like that too. So a big, big thank you to you who have actively supported this project and to those of you who have sent funds to help us do the work and buying of the materials. It's been an amazing 2016 and I know and I feel that 2017 is the moment that we step into being the new paradigm. And it is the moment when we stay in integrity, we do not allow ourselves to be pulled down in energy or frequency. And it is the year where we can start actively, fully building and uh, expressing ourselves, showing ourselves and our light without fear. And if you do have fear, well, there's a tool for you at ascension101.com. Go to slash tools or click on the tools button and use the fear processing exercise there, okay? My new website also where I'm going to be dedicating information about the Shaman Shack and my books is inelia.com. So go over there and have a visit, have a look around and tell me what you think. Until next time, this is Inelia for ascension101.com. Bye!